I was shocked when she took the placement test. Like, was this for real? Here's what happened. So my name is Rachel and I am a homeschooling mom to three kiddos and this year they will be third grade, seventh grade, and 10th grade. I have been homeschooling for I don't even know how many years, since 2015, whatever that is. My table doesn't normally look like this, but I have a birthday girl this week, so this is what it is right now. I'm gonna talk about teaching textbooks. We have done teaching textbooks for a year and a half. My middle child is the only one who has done it. She did level five, and we are halfway through the level six. I was very optimistic about teaching textbooks and I explained all my reasons why in this video if you wanna check it out. One of the main reasons that I switched was because the dynamic between my daughter and me in teaching the math, it was causing some frustration. So I decided to try to have somebody else teach and teaching textbooks does that online and they keep track of the grades for you and all of that and I thought well, we're gonna try it out and see how it works. For a while it seemed like a really good fit. My daughter was enjoying it, she was enjoying all the stuff that I mentioned in that video and one of the things that I liked about teaching textbooks is that for every lesson that she completed it would send me an email with the grade so I didn't have to necessarily go log into the program to see how she did. I just opened my email and I could see, oh, she got a 90% today or she got an 85%. And for the most part, my daughter was doing pretty good. She was usually in the 80% and sometimes 90% and occasionally she got them all right, 100%. So I was thrilled. Like in a school, this would be a, an A or a B on the report card, right? But this past year in particular, she's 12 years old now, I started to become more concerned with her time on the computer. Our computer is a laptop, so it's portable. She would always want to either do her math on the laptop or on the iPad, and she would always kind of want to go in the corner where I couldn't see the screen. I'm trying to balance between being flexible mom and and being responsible with the time that my child has on the computer um, I decided to start setting a timer for her so I would give her half an hour and say you got to get your math done in this time I thought that was reasonable and even if she did kind of stray and get distracted by something else on the computer I would know because her math wouldn't be done within that half an hour time frame and that's kind of how I managed that but it did it it started to concern me because she, to kids at this age, they have that pull towards technology. They have that pull towards constantly wanting to be on screens or exploring what the internet has to offer. I am a cautious parent. So giving her that sort of access to the computer on a regular basis and me not wanting to have to always look over her shoulder because parents, we can't look over their, our kids' shoulders for the rest of their life at some point they've got to learn some responsibility and I have another younger child and I have an older child who needs me. I can't be glued to this child all day long to make sure she's always doing what she's supposed to be doing. Just that sort of apprehension is what made me think, I don't know if teaching textbooks is the right thing for this child. So I just kind of started entertaining the idea of a different math program. So the Good and the Beautiful keeps updating their math. Their most recent one is Math 6. Well, my child is going into seventh grade. They say that the Good and the Beautiful math is a little bit more advanced, so this could be a good fit. Again, just intrigued, entertaining the idea. I pulled up the Good and the Beautiful math placement test. I was just curious where she would place. Now, I understand the different math programs are different. I'm fully aware of this. I have, if you've, you've probably seen my math comparison video where I talk about Singapore versus Saxon versus teaching textbooks. I've switched math programs. I understand the placement tests and programs might teach things in, in different orders. So I just wanted to see where, where she would place and what was on this placement test, okay? So out of curiosity, I gave her the good and the beautiful math six placement test. She couldn't even start it. 
like immediately from the very first problem, she was like, I have no idea. Couldn't even start it. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, they, they say that the Good and the Beautiful is advanced, so that's fine. So I printed off the Good and the Beautiful placement test for level five, same thing. She didn't understand some of the language, like, you know, grammar, when it was talking about place values, um, however they worded it, it wasn't necessarily place value. I can't remember, but I remember thinking, ah, oh, you know, I don't know, maybe this program words it differently. So I get it, I get it. I tried to explain what it was that they were asking to her. She was just like immediately like, this is too hard, I can't do this. She tried really hard and was like, just really struggling to get through this level five placement test. And I was like, shocked is this for real my soon-to-be seventh grader is having trouble completing the good and the beautiful five placement tests like are these programs really that far off out of curiosity again i printed off the good and the beautiful level four placement test and gave it to my child thinking this this can't be right surely there's something you know is she really giving her full effort i Sometimes there's some of that, like she's, she doesn't like math. Okay, but this was just a little bit off to me. Before I move on, I just, I need to say this. Is this a curriculum issue? I, I can't say if this is a curriculum issue. Clearly my daughter is struggling with retention and retaining all of these math concepts that she has learned through the years. And so whether it's a curriculum issue, I don't know. Curriculum is a tool. Like I'm the teacher, this curriculum is merely a tool. But clearly there is an issue and now it's mama bear's issue. Like mama bear's issue, right? And I need to address it for my child because math, as you know, is one of those subjects you can't just move on. You can't just gloss over it like maybe you could for history. They didn't learn all the facts of the Revolutionary War, that's fine. We'll circle back to that in high school and they can relearn it. But you can't do that with math. You can't move on if they haven't learned it. So I just wanna say that I'm just simply communicating this was what we experienced. I don't wanna blame a curriculum. This is just what I experienced, okay? Okay. So she took the level four placement test and she placed in the level four. It's not like she didn't know any of the level four stuff, so I wanted to figure out like, well, how far in the level four would she really need to start? So I pulled up the unit one assessment. Now, the way that their assessment works is, assessment is kind of like a, a test of whatever the previous lessons were in that unit. And there are sections and there are different colored sections. Let's just say purple and yellow. So they would do the purple section first. And if they missed a bunch in the purple purple section, so like maybe one section might be, well, this, this one is reviewing lessons one, two, and three. And then the next little square for purple might say, this is reviewing lessons five, six, and seven. So if they got the one, two, and three right, then they, they can move on. If they got lessons, the purple box for lesson four, five, and six wrong, then they would do the yellow box for extra practice. And mom can decide if we need to go back to those lessons, but it clearly tells you which lessons were the lessons that they missed the problems on. So this was gonna help me greatly, right? So I pulled up the unit one assessment and I had her take it and once again, I was shocked because <laughs> I let her know, I, I said, sweetie, I think we are going to do some of this for practice this summer, but I want to figure out where you need to start. So if you get these certain ones right, you don't have to do that math. So I was trying to incentivize her, just please do your best and like be honest. Don't just be like, I don't want to do this, <laughs> as some kids might do. So I really do believe she gave it her best effort. And here's what was shocking to me. Some of the things that she missed, I remember me teaching her from when she did Singapore math. I think we switched from, I can't remember the exact level of Singapore that she had completed before we switched over to teaching textbooks. I wanna say she completed either 3B or 4A for Singapore. Now Singapore is also advanced. So level four for Singapore 
would also probably translate to a level five of a different math program. Again, I think she did either level 3B or level 4A. And yet the things that she was missing on this The Good and the Beautiful math assessment were things that I remember teaching her when she was in fourth grade. I know I taught her that stuff with Singapore and yet with teaching textbooks, I was getting emails that was saying she's getting 80%, she's getting 90%. So what is it that she was learning? How was she getting 80 to 90% and yet retaining nothing? I, I'm speechless. I don't know what happened. I just know that it needs to be addressed. So from the unit one assessment, I looked at the sections that she got wrong and those are the only lessons that I printed out from unit one. And I thought we're just gonna review only the stuff that she doesn't know and then we're gonna retake the assessment and then we're gonna move on. And that's what I was going to do this summer. But then I decided she actually missed enough in unit one that made me think she's probably gonna need to review the rest of the book. So I just went ahead and printed the entire level four curriculum rabbit trail about printing this so this is pretty thick and it's missing some of the lessons again from unit one because i did not print all of them since she did know some of it but look at this this is not how this book is supposed to look so if you're on any of the good and the beautiful social media sites there are many people this is just a side rabbit trail note if you ever print from them because I have Mac computers, so I don't know if this is just because I have a Mac or if this is from other things, but you can't just straight print this. This is supposed to be like a boat and an ocean scene and a sun, and clearly it did not print that way. You are supposed to print as an image, as a PDF image. So I don't know what else in here maybe didn't print properly. I'm crossing my fingers. Oh, I, I see stuff. Yep, like right here. It says circle the prime numbers. Clearly there are no prime numbers there. So I just want to give you fair warning when you, I printed off this whole thing before I realized that. So I, I hope that, that this didn't ruin my whole book, but at least I have an Epson EcoTank printer, which I will link below because it prints out for about one to two cents a sheet. I have printed probably almost a thousand page. Actually, I have printed more than a thousand pages this summer and that ink tank has barely budged. So if you are a homeschool mom who is print, 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 printing, you need that printer and I will link it below. But again, you gotta print this as a PDF image. So, so even though I printed the whole thing, after she gets done with unit one, I am going to have her skip ahead and do the unit two assessment because if there are some lessons that she can skip, there's no use for me to waste our time on doing level four again. I really hope that maybe she can do two lessons a day this year. One of the reasons why we're switching to Good and the Beautiful math is kind of similar reasons, honestly, to why I switched to teaching textbooks. My daughter needs things to look interesting. She wants it to be more fun. Um, right now, she's kind of in that, that mood where nothing's fun. Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. Because she's turning into a teenager. But the good and the beautiful is more visually appealing, you know, like with colors and stuff. Whereas if I would hand her Saxon math, she would be bored out of her mind. Saxon is just like black and white, rote math drills, kind of like our business is math and that's all we care about. <laughs> I'd like to do the math. <laughs> I'd like that too. The other reason is because of the reason I switched to teaching textbooks was to have help, a different instructor teaching it. And in the Good and the Beautiful level four, it does start the video instruction there. So I'll show you how that works. So this lesson, for example, you see the little scanner right there. If you, you can scan that to have the video instruction get pulled up, or you can go to their website and pull it up on your computer for there. So she is gonna have a little 10 to 15 minute video instruction from somebody else. I plan to kind of sit next to her while she does that. That way I can answer questions and be more fully engaged in her math than I was with teaching textbooks. 
One of the things with teaching textbooks that I didn't like, besides the fact that I think the computer was a big distraction for her. If I had a desktop computer where she, was, she had to sit at a desk and didn't have the ability to move the laptop, would that have helped? I don't know, I don't know. I tried to get her to use scratch paper, you know, to like do her math on scratch paper. She didn't want to do that. Teaching textbook had a little scratch pad where you can use the mouse to do your little scratch pad. She did that, but I don't know, brain, brain to hand. Maybe there's something, something to that and it just wasn't connecting there. So it's really nice to be able to hire out your math. That's why people go with teaching textbooks because it's nice to have somebody else teach your child a subject and then you be there to monitor the progress. I wish that it could have worked for us, but what I'm finding with this particular child is I have to be more active. I just think that, that we need to try something different to see if it can help her retain these concepts better. I don't know if the good and the beautiful is the answer to that. I know that she needs the things to be fun, and more fun anyway, and visually appealing, and the good and the beautiful has some of those fun elements. The good and the beautiful does have the video instruction, so it won't just be me trying to teach. I can certainly help, but it will be another perspective and another teacher trying to help her, but then I will be there to answer questions and she won't have further distraction being on the computer. So I won't be totally alone in my quest to help her. I will have to grade everything again. That was the nice thing about teaching textbooks is they graded it, but because they grade it, it's almost like it's then it's easier for me to disconnect. It's not gonna be as easy as teaching textbooks. And it's actually going to be a little bit harder for me. I feel like this is the theme of my whole year is I'm making my job as a homeschool mom harder <laughs> because I'm giving myself things that are a little more teacher intensive. But the point of us homeschooling is to be this involved in our kids' education and address things that need to be addressed. So this is gonna be more teacher intensive and the language arts that we're doing this year is gonna be a little bit more teacher intensive. So check out this video if you wanna learn more about Brave Writer and what we're doing for my seventh grade here. Until next time, bye.